Welcome everyone. I have a few announcements before we begin the graduation ceremony. Please remain seated until you hear pomp and circumstance played. At the conclusion of the ceremony, please use both the left and right exits of the bleachers to exit. Finally, please silence all electronics at this time. Thank you.
Please be seated. Friends, families, faculty, fellow graduates, administrators, alumni, and the Downingtown Board of Education, today I welcome you to the celebration of the class of 2023. This is Downingtown STEM Academy's 10th graduation ceremony. Today, we celebrate and honor the tireless efforts of STEM's 198 graduating students. It really is fitting that I am giving the first speech at our commencement ceremony. Almost every morning, I'm the first student at school, not out of obligation, but simply because I like to be here. Over the last four years, we have formed a community, an eclectic group of students and staff with a unique dynamic. Our experiences and the bonds we have built have shaped the people we are today. This year, our graduation ceremony poses a question. What would you put in a time capsule to represent our time at STEM? Time capsules are meant to capture and hold on to special moments. We put in symbols of our lives and achievements. In putting an item into a time capsule, we are declaring its significance to us. We are recording the past as we progress to the future. How many of you, when you do puzzles, start with the edges or corner pieces? If I were to put something in a time capsule to represent our four years at STEM, it would be a corner piece of a puzzle. No puzzle can truly be complete without corner pieces. They're the foundation. No matter how complex, the corners give you something to work with, some semblance of structure and support. Despite all the changes and disruptions over the last four years, STEM has remained a grounding force in our lives. STEM has supported us not only educationally, but as people. Each and every one of us has matured and grown into an incredible, unique individual. Like a corner piece, our experiences at STEM have prepared us to interact with the rest of the world, connecting with others like pieces of a puzzle. Yet also like corner pieces, we have defined edges and traits that have set us apart from the rest. With open minds, we are able to try new things, but also accept that some things are not the right fit. We stay open to new opportunities, but we know who we are. We are a community, we are STEM students, we are almost graduates. STEM is only one piece of the puzzle. The rest is up to you to put together. Thank you. Our first speaker is the Vice President of STEM of Edom, former director and actor in the STEM Players Troupe, student council member, member of the Student Athlete Leadership Council, and a freshman orientation leader. She is a four-year varsity athlete on the Downingtown West volleyball team and was named to the 2023 All-State team. She will be attending Penn State University to study nursing and plans to play club volleyball. Please welcome Cameron Tufner. Twenty three C Tufner at student dot DASD dot org twenty twenty three. Do you remember when you got your standard district wide email way back in elementary school? I had no idea what the little number in front of our emails meant. Twenty three. Was it chosen from a random number generator? Was it my lucky number? Did it have any meaning at all? It marked the year I would graduate high school. I assumed I had plenty of time to soak in my childhood. I mean, 12 years couldn't go by that fast, could it? Well, surprise, it went by in the blink of an eye. So, here we are, 12 years later, the very last time our entire class will be together. We have all come so far. We have grown into extraordinary people. What I'm holding represents the class of 2023's unique unity, friendship, and perseverance. These are the lyrics of the song Night Changes by One Direction. To the naked eye, these lyrics seem like a simple, unimportant object, but they mean so much more to our class. The chorus in particular stands out to me. It starts with, we're only getting older, baby, does it ever drive you crazy just how fast the night changes? It's 2023, and our night has changed. 
We started off as freshmen who had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. Timid, nervous, divided. Who wouldn't be scared to attend the STEM Academy, a school whose reputation speaks for itself? Well, we've learned that STEM is more than just this reputation. The song continues with, everything you ever dreamed of disappearing when you wake up. As we wake up, remember what we've shared. Ships of purple, Java City, an entire year online with awkward breakout room conversations and teachers constantly asking us to turn our cameras on. IAs, EEs, CAS. But in this dream, we persevered and helped craft a new narrative. We fought to make this experience more than its struggles. And our narrative ends in bright blue caps and gowns. The chorus continues with, but there's nothing to be afraid of. Even when the night changes, it will never change me and you. But as we move on to the next part of our journey, we need to realize that we will be afraid, and that's okay. It's okay to be frightened, because we've been frightened before, and yet, here we are. Despite the challenges we've faced, we've continued to persist. Even though the next part of our lives may be daunting, it can never change us. In the future, when I hear this seemingly insignificant song on the radio, I'll think of 2023. I'll think of the time I've spent with you, the relationships we've formed, the experiences we've shared. I'll think of how life is like one big time capsule, a brilliant collage full of memories, experiences, triumphs, and dreams. 23, C. Tufner at student.dasd.org. Tomorrow, that email will have no association with me, but the memories I've made while it was a part of me will last a lifetime, even when the night changes. It will never change me and you. Thank you. As I introduce our next speaker, the object I will place in the time capsule is the iconic pair of senior season sunglasses. The morning of our final powder puff game, we held a pep rally in the parking lot before school as we wore our senior jeans and class colors, pink and black, to get excited for the big game. We took turns wearing this special pair of sunglasses and each had our photo taken with them. To me, this serves as a perfect representation of how all of our individual perspectives are connected through the lens of this strong, unique culture we have created throughout our time here at STEM. As we move on to the next chapter of our lives today and become Downingtown alumni, we will carry this collective lens with us throughout the rest of our lives. Every year, the Downingtown Area High School Alumni Association presents a prestigious scholarship to one student from each high school in the district. This scholarship is presented to honor these selected students for showing commitment to their school and community through extracurricular activities and leadership roles, similar to how these sunglasses encompass all of the individual perspectives that make us unique as a class. Founded over 130 years ago, the Downingtown Area High School Alumni Association is the oldest continually operating edu alumni association in the country. During this time, this organization has developed a strong philosophy on what it means to see through the lens of Downingtown alumni. Our speaker today is not only a pillar of the Downingtown community, but also a proud wearer of this lens, serving as the vice president of the alumni association. She is a graduate of Downingtown Senior High School, Westchester University, and currently teaches music at Downingtown Area School District Elementary Schools. Please give a warm round of applause to Ms. Angela Baer. Good evening. My name is Angela Baer and I'm a DASD teacher, 
parent, and the vice president of the Alumni Association. I would like to congratulate all the graduates in the class of 2023 and wish you well in your future endeavors. After receiving your diploma tonight, you will officially become Downingtown alumni. Information about the Alumni Association and how to join will be included in the graduation packet that you will receive later this evening. So what does our Alumni Association actually do? You've heard a little bit about us already. The Downingtown Area Alumni Association is recognized as one of the oldest active alumni associations in the nation, as it was founded in 1884. We sponsor your homecoming events, the Battle of the Brandywine, which is our annual East versus West football game. And this year, we're bringing back the Downingtown Alumni Hall of Fame, which was on hold for a few years due to COVID. We are currently accepting nominations for the Hall of Fame through our website. We also give a scholarship to a graduate at each of the three high schools, totaling $7,500. Students submit applications, which are then blinded and sent to the Alumni Association without student identification available to the committee. The scholarship committee is composed of alumni who are not DASD employees or current parents. They review applications and then select a recipient without knowing the student's identity. Now, I have the privilege of revealing that identity to all of you. This year's scholarship recipient is a National Merit Finalist and maintains a high GPA. She participates in numerous activities such as Future Business Leaders of America and Bringing Sunshine to Seniors, just to name a few. She's the co-president of the Society of Women Engineers and plans to study computer engineering at the University of Pennsylvania next year. It is my honor to present the Downingtown Area Alumni Association Scholarship to Tarna Jamala. To this time capsule, I add a hammer. Rather than a force of destruction, I view the hammer as a tool to build up. This stems from my love from my lifelong comfort TV channel, HGTV. The beauty of remodeling is that you interweave the past and present while breathing new life into an old home. You create a space that embraces and honors the hard work of all the individuals who shaped the house before you and build onto the foundation through telling your own story. I owe a deep admiration for those who take the leap of faith and commit to bettering a home. It takes a special drive to push through the many challenges, choosing to always build forward. Just like a home, our country and community are continually improved by those who choose to support our foundation. Many of us graduating today are 18 which means we're officially adults. As adults, we have more opportunity and responsibility than ever to improve ourselves and our society. At this time, we'd like to recognize the individuals in our class who have selflessly committed to build onto the foundation of our country. We would like to recognize George Liu and Andrew Slade, who will both be entering the United States Naval Academy and Vaughn Whitmire, who, who will join the Penn State University Air Force ROTC. We recognize these graduates today, not only for their decision to serve in the United States Armed Forces, but also for their decision to do so with such conviction. Will the three of you please stand and remain standing?
To those currently serving our country and to all of those who have served, please stand with George, Andrew, and Vaughn and be recognized for your service. Thank you, and you may be seated. As we celebrate our success, we also recognize the faculty who play an essential role in shaping the people we are today. This year, the National Honors Society awards Ms. Jenna Galena for her exemplary service with the STEM Academy Recognition of Distinction. Ms. Galena began her journey at Salisbury University as a nursing major, while she also found her love for education, teaching, dance. With hesitation regarding the nursing path, her passion for teaching and for science led her to seek the advice of her former high school biology teacher about a career in science education. Their conversation only confirmed she should switch her major sophomore year to biology with a concentration in secondary education. She then went on to Immaculata University for her master's in educational leadership and is currently taking courses through Clemson University for a master's in biology. Her teacher was there for her and she is there for us. There's something different about her room. The blinds are always open, Mesocosms fill her shelves, pictures of her family cover her desk, student creative phylum hats decorate the filing cabinets, and everyone always feels welcome. Even if you've never had Miss Galena, you saw her chaperoning prom and homecoming, judging Mr. Stem, getting dunked at Camathon, and always walking around school with a comforting smile. She has helped to foster the feeling of family in our school community. During high school, her teachers offered a crucial support system, and she wanted to create that same environment for us. When choosing a time capsule object to represent Miss Galena, we chose a string tie from an IB assessment. Just like the string, she holds STEM together because of her outstanding passion and dedication to teaching. This was further demonstrated this year when Ms. Galena wrote a personalized letter to every single one of her students. As she took time to handwrite all of these letters, she thought about stories she had with each one of us because she is there to support us as people and students. I've been lucky enough to have Ms. Galena as a teacher for the past three years of my high school experience. She taught us many processes in biology, and one thing that has stuck with me is that all of these processes are connected, supporting and balancing each other. She is the teacher who provides support and balance. When struggling to select my college, Ms. Galena was the teacher I immediately went to. Her advice was to go with your heart. I will carry that advice with me as I will be furthering my education majoring in nursing because of her. So I remind you, just as she said to me, go with your heart. Ms. Galena, will you please stand to be recognized? Thank you. Our next speaker is the treasurer of the STEM Choir, vocal ensemble, leader of book club, and a Spanish Honor Society member. She's avidly involved in the Polish community and graduated from a three-year program at Częstochowa Polish School in which she earned a Polish language certification. She'll be attending the University of Pittsburgh to study biochemistry with the ultimate goal of earning her doctorate. Please welcome Alicia Chaya.
This charger, a laptop charger, it makes me think of you, class of 2023. I know it may not seem like much, but I believe this encapsulates the four years of our time here at STEM. Remember that Zoom time? I remember. I vividly remember the ringing of my alarm clock. I remember oversleeping. I remember scrambling for my laptop, plugging in, and hopping on the Zoom to see my teacher's smiling face and 23 turned off cameras. My only excuse that I could find was, my laptop died, needed to recharge it. What a way to connect. Little did I know how in these four years, my laptop charger would become not only an excuse, but a necessity to recharge, just like us. We need each other when we're feeling low and drained. The lifelong memories we've made and the connections we've shared have helped us recharge and power through the journey of high school. Once we were all together again in school was when we truly connected. We were no longer on our screens. We were real people with real memories to make. This senior year, I think we can all relate to that service battery message on our laptops. As the batteries have deteriorated and lost function, the chargers have become more important than ever. Throughout our senior year, we as a class have leaned on and supported each other more through the last stretch. Recharging in the stucco during class or after school helped us get through the year. Every time we connect together, we recharge. We are the last class with MacBooks. Aren't we lucky? We will look back at these chargers and remember the struggle of unraveling and plugging them in every period. Tripping over the tangle of wires became the new normal. Every day consisted of us reaching for the extension cords to plug into, or begging a friend with a charger to take turns. Coming into school on a block day meant watching everyone's laptops die halfway through first period. The one object that is always there is our laptop charger. Just like us, our laptop can't do it all alone. It needs a way to recharge and continue on its purpose again and again. Our chargers were there for our Schoology exams, for late night homework sessions, for our first Zoom calls. They've been with us most of our last year here now that the laptops can't keep charge themselves anymore. They are always there when we need them and so is our class for each other. We all got together for Senior Sunrise. We recharged. We moshed to the song Family Ties. We recharged. We had stucco hangouts every day. We recharged. We pioneered Lunch and Learn. We recharged. We sang our senior song after Powder Puff on the field. We recharged. We celebrated at Buffalo Wild Wings. We recharged. We made senior jeans together. We recharged. We lifted Vaughn up to crowd surf at prom. We recharged. You are what made the past four years at STEM something wonderful. So yes, this laptop charger of mine makes me think of you, class of 2023. We did it. We made it through all four years and we did it all together. Everyone here is connected and always will be, even as the night changes. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm honored to welcome our STEM Academy Choir. Mr. Brian Lloyd has been the director of our choir ever since the very beginning of STEM. His welcoming classroom and positive attitude have given rise to the beautiful guitar strumming, soft melodies, and basement ballads that carry through the hallways of our school. Pursuing music here at STEM is a choice that requires a special drive. Practices occur during seminar, which for our choir means that they sacrifice their afternoon senior privilege time so that they may improve as musicians. Likewise, every graduating student here presented before us 
possesses a unique drive of their own for academic excellence that comes with sacrifice as well. Attending STEM was a choice, not a requirement. It was always a choice ever since we first received these acceptance letters that both our student body and families remember so dearly. We have been challenged on numerous occasions as individuals since that very moment of opening our letters four years ago, yet no one here took the easy way out. We made it. Without further delay, please also welcome STEM's graduation band, Jamie Fulmer, Chase Daniels, Grace Pothin, and Heinrich Rudenkroger, who will accompany the choir as they perform It's Time by Imagine Dragons. Thank you. Same as I was Oh, don't you understand? 
Let's give all our senior musicians a round of applause, please. Good evening and congratulations, class of 2023. Our next speaker tonight is the president of the German National Honor Society, a member of our very own STEM choir, as well as a member of our STEM vocal ensemble. He spent valuable time this year as a link leader to help with breaking boundaries amongst our school community. And you sometimes saw him with a green bag filled with cookies and other confections which meant that it was someone's birthday. Our speaker will be attending Pennsylvania State University this fall to study chemistry, and we wish him the best of luck. Please welcome Noah Lucas. Early on during my time at STEM, like so many others, I started to care about how I looked. The ninth grade me strongly associated appearance with identity, the piece that we show the world. My brown sweater is a piece of my identity. <laughs> Who were you freshman year? Who are you now? I'm sure the two versions of yourselves are wildly different, as they are for me. Though, there is one thing that both versions of myself have in common, this brown sweater. Maybe there was a certain prestige that we all felt as we were accepted into STEM. We were proud because I wasn't particularly social. I didn't go to homecoming. I didn't go to powder puff. I didn't participate in cupcake wars. I was at school for one thing and one thing only, or so I thought. This sweater may look familiar to a few of you. I wore it very often during freshman year and I still wear it today. I bought this sweater during a field trip to New York with the choir. It looked nice and warm and comforting, but it soon turned into a memento of the trip and the person I left behind. You see, on that trip, I found it was more fulfilling to spend time getting to know all of you and not so much what was going to be on the next test. Any major change needs a strong foundation, right? For me, that foundation on which I would form a new identity was a comforting sweater made of 100% cotton. I was starting to understand that what mattered to me wasn't a project due date. That could wait. I wanted to spend my time with people 
I was at odds with what I wanted in high school. Would my time be better spent studying? What was more valuable, the people around me or my education? Or could I have both? I wanted to become a part of the STEM community, but less than a month later, we found the world had other plans. During sophomore year, this sweater was one of the few things people could see about me in my Zoom calls. It became a part of my appearance, how I saw myself and how others saw me. Many people focus on the perceptions that others have of us, but something I found here at STEM is how we see ourselves, how we form our identity is much more indicative of our character. By sophomore year, I got an answer to my question. I thrived in the online environment. I did everything that was expected of me and I was the most diligent I ever was. But in the end, I was distant from friends. I'm sure I don't need to tell you how online school interfered with all of our goals. We saw each other every day, yet felt so alone. I actually enjoyed my time online. I spent less energy being alone and I could use it on hobbies, classwork, and other activities. But being alone made me forget the promise I made to myself to change. I wore the sweater to so many Zoom calls, but lost what it meant to me. Indicative of my regression, the reason, the, one, the reason I went into school for one day that year was to make up a keystone test with this sweater for support. But seeing you all made me remember, because when I did see you again, you were different, and I was different too. Everyone grew during that year, and I regret not being more involved in your growth. That regret made me wake up to an identity that I would embody for the rest of my time here at STEM, and hopefully for the rest of my life. The person I wanted to be was a confidant. On the first day of junior year, I donned my sweater, determined to embrace our school community, to connect with people again, to find balance. For the first time, I went to homecoming, I went to Powder Puff, and I went to Cupcake Wars. For the first time, I was at school for more than one thing. Senior year, I found the balance in my life. I felt as if I could learn from the time I spent with all of you just as much as the time I spent in my classes. I feel content and proud of who I am now. Through all four years that I wore it, the sweater never changed, but I did. I've internalized what it meant to me, which is why I can set this sweater in the time capsule with a smile on my face. Having finally fulfilled my promise, I now own the confidence the sweater once gave me. Now, when I see the sweater, I don't just remember the trip to New York. I remember my link trips, a senior sunrise, cupcake wars, and more. I'm sure everyone here has an object that's just like that, that brings you back to the times that defined you. It's hard to leave those times behind. So, as we move forward, I implore you, wear your heart on your sleeve. Thank you. It's time to begin, isn't it? So much of graduation feels like an ending, but in fact, it's a beginning. Some beginnings are unforgettable, some are much smaller, and may even feel insignificant initially. But in the routine, comfort and habit are established. Beginning each day at the STEM Academy, I'm greeted by the quiet building. No matter the schedule or special event that day, I begin the day with the walk from my truck with my key in hand to open the door. In the winter, it's completely dark with a door light leading the way. In the spring, like this morning, not exactly like this morning, the building is slightly lit by the new sun, but all is still. The peacefulness is a great way to, for me to begin my day, a time to pause and remember my direction and focus. On the short walk to the building, I have a minute or two to reflect on purpose and goals and our school community. In the day's beginnings, I, read my, I, re, I ready myself for why we are here and hope that each new small beginning can have an impact. We are here for students, we are here for our school community, and we are here for each other. I turn the key and I open the door. It's time to begin. 
Four years ago, I unlocked the door each day to, was the t to what was the typical school year, until it wasn't. We shared time in what felt like the start of a very normal ninth grade year. You entered the building to newfound freedoms of collaboration rooms, time to sit together and work in the NOCO, and of course, the last hurrah for MacBooks in Java City, and all the typical STEM experiences. Classes, friends, activities, and sports, and clubs, and everything were perfectly normal until Cupcake Wars, which I never said was normal in any other place. And then Friday, March 13th. It started as a two-week break from school, a time for caution and a time to be home, a time we initially felt would do little to impact our school life, thinking hopefully maybe this was a pleasant break in the spring. The year ended unceremoniously without the laughter in the hallways, without the community of collaboration and groups of focused students crowded around a table with a problem to solve or a project to complete, without Mr. Lloyd blasting the end-of-year playlist in the basement hallway like he did today. It would be some time before we would be together again. Three years ago, I unlocked the door each day to what, what would be practically empty building for so long. This time led to opportunities with family and close friends but, friends, but provided distance from the school community. For the first nine weeks, you were learning to Zoom and collaborate in breakout rooms. You found a way to still connect, even though you were not together, until later, when half of you were together half of the time. It may be a little blurry to each other when you looked at each other because of the plexiglass. But what I can tell you is that every one of you was missed but we carried on. Every day, I unlocked the door, walked each hallway, went to the gym, made coffee, opened my laptop, started my day, though it was quiet and isolated. Two years ago, I unlocked the door, covered with signs of the time of social distancing and health checks and other guidelines, but still knew all of you would be physically joining us. This time we felt revitalized as you were back in the hallways and we perfected smiling with our eyebrows. Every day, I unlocked the door, I walked each hallway, I went to the gym, I made coffee, I opened my laptop, and I started my day. This year, I unlocked the door to what felt more like the school year we were all waiting for. You guys are gone a long time. But this time was different. It was normal again. The energy, the community, the laughter, and you were back with us. You filled the hallways with art projects and drew formulas on the whiteboard. Over the summer, you rid the school with a mac and cheese, yellow paint, and the stucco, and I thank you for that. You made STEM what it is today. You brought it all back. Every day, I unlocked the door, walked each hallway, went to the gym, made coffee, opened my laptop, and started my day. You see, our students who spoke here this evening shared items they contributed to our time capsule. For me, my key is what I contribute. For the last four very, very different years, it's been a constant for each time to begin. Keys are powerful symbols of access and opportunity. They represent the ability to unlock and open doors that lead to new and exciting possibilities. And just as I use my key each morning to open the doors to our school, we also turn the key to open up our futures to endless opportunities and potential. Our time capsule filled with all the contributions today will be a reminder of our journey together and all that we have accomplished. But the key, the symbol of new beginnings, will remind us to always be ready to unlock the doors to new paths, to never give up, to never be afraid of the unknown, to always be ready to open the next door. Because every time we do, we discover, we discover something amazing and wonderful waiting just beyond it. So as we embark on the next chapter of our lives, my hope for you is that you remember to always keep your key close and to never be afraid to take a chance 
and see what's waiting on the other side of that door. Congratulations, 23. All right. Finally, the moment you've all been waiting for, we will begin the presentation of diplomas. Mr. Sheehan, please join me at the podium and begin to read the names of our graduates. I would also like to invite members of our school board of directors to the stage to hand out diplomas. Victoria Naku Labwama. Lauren Elizabeth Belwar Ayers. Anusha J. Ritsika Chikuri. Casey Jean Benevento. Andrew John Slade. Gabrielle Francis Aceto. Abigail Elizabeth Walter, Bell Zoe, Isabella Lam Eng, Noah Alexander Lucas, Alicia Anna Chaya, Cameron Jean Tufner. Tejas Venkat Chigurupati. <laughs> Seth Michael Lemler. Adi Agarwal. George Liu Liu. Jacqueline Kayla Alfinito. Campbell Garland Lloyd. Shreyas Anagiri. Evan Taylor Lloyd. Kirsten Helen Aerosmith. Vunch Luthra. Kendall Joy Bailey. Brett Andrew Lutz. Brooke Alexandra Benevento. Ethan Brennan Liu. Devanshi Bargov. Abhishek Mahesh. Vanch Niraj Berwal. Janaid Mansoor. Yasaswini Bamaretti. Ellison Kathleen Murata. Cameron John Bowden. Faith Ann Mason. Nicola Alicia Boyd Perry. Jules Andrew Maylot. Sylvia Jinmay Brof Cabarins. Mira Reddy May Reddy. Traeger Antrim Brown. Kyle Robert McCauley. Caroline Ann Burgess. Andrew James McGeehan. Christopher Michael Caparelli. Sedan Vinod Menin. Jade Lanty Carlson. John William Michaels. Andrew Chan. Noah Scott Mikulich. 
Priyam Rajendra Singh Chahan. Alexis Schuyler Montgomery. Geetha Chidi. Edmund Francis Moore III. Nithya Sai Chigruapati. Tyler James Mordoski. Taran Venkat Chigarupati. Kira Riley Morin. Adhira Chilamkorthy. Mackenzie Kathleen Muldoon. Yadaraj Pradeep Chowdhury. Shrieker Sai Nagoti. Ryan William Crispin. Kylie Y. Wynn. Isabella Suzanne Clark. Chase Elizabeth Nunciato. Sawyer Houston Clark. Jillian Faith Osgood. Lindy Elizabeth Cochran. Paige Catherine Oskison. Camille Jane Cavada. Tanya Punth. Evan Patrick Dady. Jacob James Pazic. Leon Shin Dang. Janil Peril Patel. Jacqueline Patricia DeBerardinas. Pages V. Pathapati. Serena Dharmapuri. Sarah Ellen Platt. Araya Sky Diebold. Grace Miriam Pothin. Violet Carver Dietrich. Connor Thomas Power. Milin Natalie Din. Shannon Constance Prasant. Rebecca Ann Dixon. Madeline Sarah Proof. Evan Shaw Dow. Casey Ian Ramaskell. Grace Dolores Dungan. Anish Sriragav Raparla. Casey Susan Epstein. <laughs> Sonia Avu Reddy. Dominique May Ercolino. Nathan Allen Reynolds. Zora Catherine Yoon Farnham. Callie Grace Ritter. Mark Blanchard Flexer. Gabrielle Amari Roberts. Naomi Ria Furtado. Brian Chapman Roseboro. Dylan Michael Friedland. Manav Rout. Shivani Gadaparthi. Ethan Edward Rutkowski. Melody Faith Gao. Timothy John Salmon. Shreya Garg. Danielle Francisco Santino Salazar. Kalina Ann Gosser. Hitesh Saravanarajan. Jillian Anastasia Gatlin. Kashti Satish Umre. Thomas Francis Gibbons. Ryan James Savage. Mega Gobi. Brendan Michael Schmallenberger. Mitchell Aaron Goldman. Connor Lachlan Cease. Atherv Satya Gopalani. Catherine Grace Sexton. Elizabeth Catherine Grant. Nivedita Shamsundar. Samantha Carol Graybill. Avneet Kaur Sidhu. 
Caitlin Grace Grenoble. Samantha Christine Sims. Ethan William Griffith. Shreyas Singh. Anushree Grover. Shreya Singh. Vikash Gunalan. Trisha Sursat. Zaina Hader. Caden yeah! Charles Smith. Kylie Elizabeth Hannum. Madeline Rose Snyder. Guilherme Hen. Paige Rose Sponfellner. Madeline Quinn Herr. Luke Whitney Sperling. Ryan Christopher Hires. Azareth Sriram. Bridget Ann Howe. Shashwat Srivastava. Oak Edward Hugh. Yeah. Dylan Miles Stout. Michaela Alyssa Hyman. Kirthana Sajesh. Kamal K. Amaya. Rethik Hari Suryapalam. Arjun Ramakrishnan Iyer. Trey Daniel Schweitzer. Lillian Singer Jackson. Amanola Syed. Sakshi Jane. Charlotte Tan. Farina Jamula. Carolyn Kathleen Tarpley. Ishan Ja. Brian Javier Teada. Wafiza Joel Kipley. Twee Tien Julie Tran. Adithia Kadiala. Layla Tufek. Rania Imani Kalim. Isabella Teresa Vanor. Akash Ramarao Kolmati. Suchal Varada. Lanisha Kamana. Mitchell Scott Wadel. Rishi Kamtum. Samuel Kenneth Walls. Ayush Karkare. Stephen Yunkang Wang. Sanya Rajesh Karpe. Sunny Yung Wong. Joseph Ethan Kokinda the Fourth. John Lawrence Warner. Sreyas Kota. Molly Bennett Wasson. Ryder James Colt. Vaughn Carey Whitmire the Second. Travia Reddy Kundavaram. Hannah Jo Wolf. Isha Kushari. Nathan James Wong. Paul Anthony Lagravinus. Charlotte Ayana Yarnall Stevenson. Lauren Emma Largoza. Melissa Jean Yelsick. Ava Grace Lebrasco. Anya Elise Zebliam. Nicholas Todd Lebrasco. Vincent Elias Zoris. Ethan Robert Lemler.
stop laughing. All right. <laughs> that worked. That was good. At this time, I would like to ask our educational leader, our superintendent, Dr. Robert O'Donnell, to please join me at the podium. <laughs> Dr. O'Donnell, I present to you the class of 2023 of the Downingtown STEM Academy. As principal, I am certifying to you that this class has successfully completed all Pennsylvania statutory requirements for successful completion of high school in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. If you would, please confer graduation upon these 198 seniors. Well, I get over there around 7 a.m. and uh, it's pretty good energy, uh, not unlike this evening. And somebody asked me to be a judge and I hadn't eaten breakfast, so sure, I took them up on that. And then I, uh, I took a lap and I bought about 12 cupcakes. Later that evening, I got home and my kids were asking about the cupcakes that I brought home and there were six of them. <laughs> and I explained it and pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. And your school has wonderful spirit and it's because of our students and obviously our student leaders and seniors. Before conferring the diplomas, I'd like to offer my sincere and heartfelt congratulations to the class. As you transition beyond high school, know that the past 13 years have helped you to develop not only the knowledge and skills but also the strength and resilience to face whatever challenges come your way. However, you are gonna to have to make some tough decisions, decisions that you may not be prepared to make. And I just want you to remember that each of you has a team of supporters in your corner, and many, if not all of them, are here with us tonight. So take a, take a few seconds and just look around. Guess what? Your parents or guardians have been in your seat and have had to make tough decisions. And that was back in the day when they were pretty cool, just like you. <laughs> and because of that, they possess something known as wisdom. There's no one in this world who wants you to be happier and more successful than the people supporting you in this stadium tonight. So when you find yourself in a tough spot and you're not quite sure what to do next, reach out to them. And a text message won't cut it. You need to pick up that phone and have a conversation. Life is complex, and the people here tonight are the ones who are going to support you through the truly tough stuff. I hope that you've appreciated and enjoyed your time as part of our school district, because we've loved having you. Now, without further ado, will all the graduates please rise. By the power vested in me by the Downingtown Board of School Directors, in accordance with the Pennsylvania School Code, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and the Department of Education, I hereby confer the academic degrees declaring the class of 2023 as graduates of Downingtown STEM Academy. Graduates, you may now turn your tassel. Congratulations. Please be seated. day we've been tirelessly working towards for the past 12 years. We made it into the blue gowns our kindergarten selves would have drowned in, but we're now confidently clothed in. We made it past the countless exams. <laughs> Sorry. We made it past the countless exams, IAs, and EEs that plagued our minds. We made it out of those two co-booths where time seemed to run away and we were glued to our peers. We made it to the pinnacle moment of our high school careers 
and I cannot be more proud of us. And it was not easy to become an us. We missed a large part of our formative high school years, but you wouldn't know it by looking at us now. We've made it to the last moment that we are in us, united as a STEM Academy class of 2023. I encourage you to look around at the people you are sitting next to, your closest friends, loveliest acquaintances, and the people you never spoke to but will miss their presence. And while we've made it to this end, there is still so much left for all of us to do. And I wish each and every one of you the best of luck on your journeys. And now we've made it to this exact moment. Please join us now to commend the class of 2023 as we take our final step together toward an amazing future. Graduates, please stand. Downingtown STEM Academy, please lift your caps and remove the tassel. On the count of three, it's really time to begin. One, two, three.